everything in this video has a bad rap, but they do have some redeeming qualities. Let's get straight into it. Serious question though, does anyone use the spa to regain energy in this game? For some reason, you will only gain access to this thing after the third day of summer. And to be honest, I would definitely use this more if it was available earlier in the game. But we really should be using this more. While it is a little bit far from our farm, the rate at which energy is regained is quite fast and should not be underestimated. Charcoal kiln doesn't get as much use as it should. This little device takes 10 pieces of wood and turns it into a single piece of coal. And while I will admit that the price is very expensive, farming for wood is much easier than farming for coal in the mines. Just plant a bunch of trees, like a crazy amount of trees, and go on a merry deforestation adventure. But the charcoal kiln has one bonus benefit that no one is talking about. As you know, the Force is expensive, so just fill up your farmhouse with charcoal kilns, put them on, and sleep in a cabin somewhere else. Who knows what might happen? The mini obelisk. Do you know how amazing this thing would be if you could place it anywhere in the game? That would be absolutely game changing. Unfortunately, this thing can only be placed on your farm. It will let you teleport between two places on your farm, which isn't that great, but it could be really good if you use it correctly. I think the absolute best use for this thing is if you place it right at the bottom of your farm by the exit to the cinder step forest. This can definitely save you some time when you want to go grab some hardwood or check the traveling merchant. However, you can make it even more effective if you also place all four obelisks right next to the mini obelisk. Now if you use the return scepter and immediately use the mini obelisk, you will be right next to your set of obelisks and can continue adventuring without wasting any time at all. It's not that bad if you use it correctly. I know you'll love crafting up those tea tree saplings just to sell them for maximum profit. But they do have one other use, a really good use. Keep some of the tea tree saplings and use them as fences. As you know, regular fences will decay over time and they will need to be replaced. Replacing them is not that expensive but it is tedious. Grown tea tree saplings will never decay. They are way more reliable and it can be fun to grab some free tea leaves at the end of each season. Think about it, sometimes convenience is better than profit. There are endless debates about the gosh darn farm cave. Which one is better, fruit bath cave or mushroom cave? Well here is something you need to hear. Both are pretty bad. You will most likely only use them in the early game. And then you might find yourself never entering that cave again. Just look at how my fruit bath cave has stacked up. But don't worry, both caves have one redeemable aspect that anyone can take advantage of. Decoration. Just decorate your cave and make it look awesome. My cave is set up as a gaming room, arcade machines, a computer, and a jukebox. What more could we ask for, am I right? Why do you visit the desert? Is it to visit the skull cavern or to trade items in at the desert trader? But what other reasons do you visit the desert for? Nothing? Well, that is a big mistake because the desert is massive. Just look at it. Abuse the desert. Place everything in that little desert. From trees with tappers to processing machines turning straw fruit into wine. There is so much space on this desert and you can really save an absurd amount of space on your farm for other things, like actually growing crops and stuff. Now if only we could use garden pots in the desert. Do you know what is trash? Well, literal trash that you can steal from trash cans, fish up when hunting for dinner, or from crab pots, newspapers, driftwood, broken glasses. All of these things are just useless. But it is our duty to recycle. Yes, recycling machines can turn useless trash into something valuable. Driftwood turn into regular wood, newspapers can turn into torches or cloth, broken CDs and broken glasses can turn into refined quartz. I guess trash isn't that bad after all. 
Bee houses with a fairy rose flower around it is one of the most profitable things you can do in this game. It's just a good idea, especially if you place these on your ginger island farm. But there is one problem. You need maple syrup to craft a bee house. And a regular tappet takes 9 days to produce a single maple syrup. That is way too long. This is where the heavy tapper comes in. Now I know the heavy tappers seem kind of useless since they are unlocked so late in the game and are so expensive to craft. However, if your goal is to craft as many bee houses as I have, then these are going to cut the time it takes to craft these in half. Don't underestimate heavy tappers. Once you reach the late game, you'll quickly notice that your chickens are just not keeping up with everything else. Since they produce a new egg each and every day, you kind of have to visit them every day and turn their little eggs into mayonnaise every single day if you want to keep up. But the mayonnaise machine is still amazing in the end game. But not on silly little chicken eggs, on massive juicy ostrich eggs. Ostrich eggs have two major advantages. First, since they are so big, they will produce 10 servings of mayonnaise per egg. Secondly, the mayonnaise will retain the quality of the egg, meaning each iridium ostrich egg will sell for 5,300 gold. That's kinda nutty. I was wrong. In a previous video, I stated that the loom was trash and you should avoid it. But I forgot something and you made sure to let me know in the comments. Thanks for that. I stated that turning iridium quality wool into cloth using a loom was bad because it literally sells for less gold. And yes, that is true. However, iridium quality wool has a little small secret. Iridium wool has a 50% chance to produce two pieces of cloth in Instead of just one. And that is enough to actually make it worth it. Placing iridium wool into a loom is actually worth it. Unless you are unlucky and it only produces a single cloth, of course. It's our favorite time. It's Black Friday. And this is a high value deal. Gamer Sub is this great energy drink with zero calories and zero sugar. And it costs 35 cents per serving. And most importantly, it tastes amazing but wait there is more see this cup you can get this cup for free with any purchase that is at least fifty dollars to maximize your savings this is what you have to do first use the link in the description to save 10 percent on everything then add these free samples to your cart it's free so why wouldn't you then grab two items so your order is at least fifty dollars Grab two flavors, or one shirt and one flavor, or a box of delicious snack bar. Then you get your free cup that is worth $25. And most importantly, you will be supporting me and my channel. But remember, never feel pressured to do anything. You just being there is enough support for me already. Thanks for watching this video. If you had fun, then check out this video about things that could actually be useless. But for now, I will see you in the next video.